Hello and welcome. It was some time ago I was producing some videos about a variety of half bridge ICs with bootstrap technologies. I was using a breadboard for the test. I decided to create a printed PCB board for my members which is compatible with a range of different half bridge ICs. I like to talk about the challenges you face when trying to get the IC operational. First, let's have, have a quick look at the technology. The half bridge which topology is widely used in power converters and motor drives. This is largely due to the half bridge's ability to provide efficient synchronous control of a pulse with modulated signal over the bus voltage. However, between the controller and the power devices, gate drivers are often required to obtain faster switching time and provide isolation for either safety and or functional purposes. For systems with bus voltages that are above the maximum power switch gate to source voltage limits, the gate drivers must be supplied with voltages other than the system bus. To power the gate driver on the high side switch, the power source must be able to follow the V out voltage from the voltage source, since the gate is referenced to this voltage. Adequate de decoupling can often resolve any voltage spikes seen due to the fast charging of the isolated power supply's ground reference. Additionally, each gate driver that does not share a common ground can require its own isolated power supply. Powering the isolated side of your half bridge configuration presents some unique challenges, but many topologies exist for the designer. Gate drive transformers excel in part count, but are limited to complexity of drive signal and limitation due to the magnetic core dynamics. Dedicated isolated supplies can remove duty cycle and frequency requirements with a drawback of cost and solution size. If duty cycle and switching frequency can be constrained, the half bridge bootstrap configuration is inexpensive and can greatly reduce part count and solution costs. Some highly integrated solutions exist with a power transfer occurring with internal transformers, saving solution size and parts count. With the many top topologies shown, a designer has the tools to create a robust half bridge solution. I said at the time that all this can be done one little IC chip. Let us look at the IC and identify the areas of signal and voltage source. So here is a picture of an actual or it's an example of the application. Um, the layout is not correct. The pins are correct. So pin one and two is your signal input. It is 3.35 volt and 5 volt input logical compatible. That means no analog signal or only square wave can be used. The signal has also to be synchronous, means they have to exist at the same time for high and low. Pin 5 goes to voltage rail and requires a minimum of 10 volt to a maximum of 20 volt. The capacitor C3 is a DC bias capacitor and need to have twice as much capacitance than the bootstrap capacitor C4. For that, you need to calculate the values. I will not go into that. That is something you can um, um, look it up or you can go on my member side to find out because I went exactly through this process for our load I'm going to use today for the flyback transformer. The diode D4 or bootstrap diode is charging the bootstrap capacitor for each cycle. It provides a high drive gate with the voltage level above rail voltage rail level. This is important to fully switch on the high side. The drive low side is at the gate signal level from the driver voltage and is independent. This gate drive can be used in normal operation to drive any amplifiers like for example the class C amplifier. The load is connected to the bridge where the voltage of the voltage shots is added to the bootstrap capacitor. If the bootstrap capacitor is too small, it will sw switch off at half or shorter signal duration. I will demonstrate that later. If it is too large, it will not reach the highest voltage and the high side will not fully conduct. So let us go now to the demonstration table and we will run you through the PCP layout design. So now here on the demonstration table you see um, the, the printed PCP board and already assembled 
PCP board, which is already connected to the load. So we're having this first here, you can see here is the input signal coming in here. This should be always a square wave, otherwise you will get distortion. So we are using a Hexschmidt inverter to provide us with a synchronous signal for high and for low side. Because the voltage requirement here on this IC is 4.5 to 5 volt, we need to have a voltage regulator because this IG chip requires a minimum of 10 volt. So we're going to have here a voltage regulator added, which allows us to always provide the necessary 4.5 volt here to 5 volt here on this ice chip. And here the um, so voltage we apply here from 10 to 20 volt. We have from this ice chip chip, we have here the DC bias capacitor and the DC bias capacitor and the bootstrap capacitor here. They need to be calculated as mentioned, otherwise you will not get it working at all. But we have, before we go and do that, you have of course some test points. So we have signal test points here for the signal from the hex inverter. And we have test points here, that is signal um, from the gate. So here you will see the higher voltage, which is plus a, a voltage rail on a high side. On a low side, you should see a buff uh, just about that what we are providing here from signal to set so it says 10 volt here 5 volt so is that something like that we would probably here see here around 14 volt and here we would see that above that based on the information we get here uh, plus um, some of the details it should be without load about 15 volt when the load of let's say we have 10 volt in here it should be 25 volt here so we're going to see that later on so we have on also, I have here a general RC snapper installed. I had a, a previous layout where I had an RC snapper for each um, um, a MOSFET, but that consumed too much power. And here in this fashion, it is much more linear, or let's say it's easier to control, and uh, it does not consume so much power if I do it like that. We have here on the output side, we have the source coming in here, this is our positive voltage rail, and we have here the source for the negative voltage rail. And then in between, both of them are the bridge, we connect only, only one. So we see here, this is a bridge connected, and we're using a ductor. We go about that later. We have seen that in my previous video um, um, I did shown on YouTube. So we'll go over now and run this. this this board now with this load and we'll go to various scenarios to demonstrate the changes you will face. So in our first example we are gonna test here on this test pins the, um, the signals coming in um, Currently on a power supply, you see that they have currently 13 volt applied, but this applies only to this chip that doesn't apply here to says Hexschmidt inverter. Hexschmidt inverter has his 5 volt. So we're going to see how that looks like. I energize that now. And it measures 5.6 volt exactly for both sides. And the signal, as you can see here, exists both at the same time. So we're going to move over now. I'm going to put it now at this, at this moment. I put it over to the other side, to the gate and see how that looks like. So we have it identical here, as you can see here on the input side. Now the gate side will look a little bit different. Let's see. Now I have connected it over to the gate sides and I will start energizing that up. So that's what we currently see. We are seeing 13.7 volt on the low side and we see 15.5 volt on the high, high side. So it's slightly higher. So if I would change now, let's go, let's do that. If I change now voltage level here on the input side, let's see that will change here, but they go gradually both down as you can see that here. They'll go down to 10 volt like that. So it's 10.5 volt. So it's so actually that follows uh, the low side follows exactly here what we have here the 10 volt goes on here what i put in here 
but I have 11.5 volt currently on the high side. That's a little bit we have here on the capacitor, but that will change then dramatically once we are energizing the circuit. So it brings it back up to 13 volt because that is the best operation. So that's what I said the last time. You need to be very aware about gate voltage to drain voltage. If the gate voltage is too low, it will not be able to conduct. And here, especially with this half bridge here in a bootstrap variation, it's a very great crucial point to make sure that your gate voltage on the high side is high enough to conduct. Back to 13 volt. Here we go. 15.5 volt on high side and 13.7 volt on the low side. So we'll start now energizing the board. So I have now configured the system for um, the starting frequency which we're going to use. And I will show you now the complication which comes if you, uh, if you um, move away from the ideal configuration you have calculated here. So if I start that up now, we see uh, our voltage rate, we have 14.1 volt, as I said, on channel 2, that is the low side, and we have 15 volt on the high side. So I have currently, you see, that 9.18 volt applied for the load, so that goes on top of that. 15 volt should be around 24, 25 volt, if we add that. 25, 26, it, will, so it says here peak to peak. So we have 17.7 kilo, kilo volt on the load, and I want to have it to 18.1, uh, that's here, and we are consuming 3.77 watts. So this will consume, of course, of the various systems, will consume always more energy than my zero voltage switching device. However, zero voltage switching is another subject is restricted only to this purpose of the half bridge and also you can have saturation on the core material and that can also um, have problems later on i i saw that, that i have some kind of movement voltage movement uh, on the signal side that means it is not 100 percent stable so for testing and so on it's good but if you have that at a later stage for for production system we have to go to optical or digital solutions so that we have a stable signal coming into our amplifiers. So here we have 18.1. It goes now a little bit uh, up to 18.3. I can reduce the voltage a little bit like that. That is good. 3.61 watt is, is uh, the latest value. That's actually quite good value for this half bridge. Now let's go to some of the problems. Or well, let's say, if you look at the signal of channel one, you see a little spike up. That is smooth because I'm using here the RC snapper, and the RC snapper is taking care of that from, from a signal point of view to smooth it out. But also, as I said, the um, inductor is taking care of that so that we don't have that much spikes. So, if you are considering to play around now with voltage and fresh frequency to see if you find a better value. As I said, you will be in for surprise because you have no room to uh, derive or to move away from your ideal configuration. Let's say you want to have 30 kilovolt. In this configuration, that is impossible to reach 30 kilovolt. You would have to recalculate and come back with new values for your capacitance to it. I want to show you what it means. So if the signal doesn't get enough voltage, it will break down earlier. Now let's let's do that, let's simulate that. If I go down in the frequency, goes like that. And if I increase now the voltage to come up again, let's see here, you see what happens. So here I'm not at that frequency cannot charge the capacitor high enough anymore to keep the signal high enough and because of that I'm not able from the high side to drive the load efficient. I can achieve not even here, yeah, it says 11 kilovolt, but look at the high signal, it looks not good at all. So if we would increase the voltage, we are collapsing it 
we would have to decrease the voltage further down like that so that we look look at it at 76 kilohertz we have at the moment 10.9 and our signal code if i increase the voltage again it's collapsing because the capacitor can't keep up with the voltage we put into our load it would have to be much larger in order to handle that so if i go further down in the frequency let's do it quick as long as i can handle the voltage we will have some kind of voltage going through the load however we will not ever achieve our value anymore and now a little change here on the voltage makes big difference now let's go the other side around let's say 18.47 kilovolt was good we are at 19.7 as you can see here if i go higher now in the frequency it's the same situation we are going down in our in the power we can provide to the load if i want to compensate and increase the voltage again we see the same picture i cannot it's impossible and changing the frequency doesn't make any difference i have to go down and even that doesn't make difference because the voltage is too high i have to reduce the voltage and you can see here we had 18.57 kilohertz I have 20.1 kilowatt and 20.1 kilowatt is actually the maximum here for this configuration I can provide. So if I go down with the voltage to 18.1, so here I consuming 3.9 watt is far more. It is not the ideal point for the configuration. It was around 18.2 kilohertz, 80.27. Let's Bring it up to 18.1 here 3.68 so just to recap you have to calculate for the load the voltage the frequency and the current you require because based on that the capacitance value will be calculated you have to add the capacitance and then the dc cap uh, dc bias capacitor has to be minimum twice the size of your bootstrap capacitor but as you can see here from my calculation point of view this is a maximum i can currently achieve with my zero voltage um, um, half bridge amplifier i can achieve 30 40 50 kilowatt without any problem by changing some of the parameters and um, get there however in with the half bridge which are used mainly in industry for motor designs or for converters and so on you have fixed values you can't change them and you need to calculate all of them precisely for that load otherwise it will not work on that is one of the major problems inclusive the signal provision to the driver which makes it very very difficult to get it cleanly working so this is a summary of or let's say an overview of the challenges you face when you work with with a half pitch with with uh, bootstrap technology if you want to have more details join me on my website i have um, produced detailed videos about configuration and testing and so on and go into that thank you very much for watching until the next time goodbye